I am back with another reading wrap up and for this reading wrap up I've decided to just kind of include all of my summer reads since we're coming into the end of summertime and moving into the fall time and I have to say I am a fall queen my birthday's in fall it's my favorite season my favorite colors the vibes but like I said I'm going to wrap up what I read during the summertime this includes June, July, and August. And so without much further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys can even see this. I do have like a pimple patch on my cheek here. I forget that I'm not on the beauty breakdown sometimes and that you guys might not know what that is, but they're amazing. And I just decided to leave it on for the video. <laughs> because I get pimples, so <laughs> anyways. So for the first book, I'm kind of working in reverse because this is the most recent book that I finished and they're also the partner of this video and that is Pinyon Scorpion and the Barbershop Detectives by Rick Blayweiss. I was sent this book to read and I actually took this with me on my trip to Hawaii, which I just got back from. I always like reading books whenever I'm like lounging poolside or on the beach. And so I thought this was perfect because it's kind of like a comfy, cozy mystery novel. <laughs> And so, I don't know, I don't like to read something that is super deep. I like this because it was fairly light for being a mystery. It was easy to follow and I really like the storyline. I like the characters in this book. And on top of that, it's not just like your basic murder mystery. There's like other mysteries in here that Pinyon Scorpion and his fellow detectives in the barbershop are working on. And so I did a little like mini style vlog I'll include here of me reading this book. Good morning. So it is the first day in Hawaii and I'm starting off by reading because I've been waiting to like have a peaceful reading morning. I'm excited about this because I feel like it's kind of Agatha Christie-esque, which I'm a big fan of. So we'll see how this goes, but it's number one best-selling cozy mystery and historical mystery, which are perfect for a vacation. So I'm gonna get started on this. I'm about a little less than 60 pages in. I'm up to chapter eight and I just finished the Case of the Bastard Son. And so far I'm definitely seeing a lot of similarities, at least to me with like Hercule Perot. I'm hoping it picks up a little bit, but I'm enjoying it. It's kind of, like I said, the perfect book to be reading poolside because I can kind of follow it, but also it's not super intense, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep reading. We're doing pretty good. As I kind of mentioned in the little blog bit, I really like Agatha Christie's book and I was first introduced to Agatha Christie through the murder of Roger Ackroyd which I've talked about on this channel and kind of the character of Hercule Poirot which reminded me a lot of Pinyon Scorpion in this book. If you're into like cozy murder mysteries I would definitely recommend this. I gave it a three and a half out of five stars and I was definitely entertained while I was reading this poolside and just kind of hanging out. I, I kind of liked that there were almost like different storylines with in this book because once I finished one it kind of rounded about into the next one which I really appreciated so there was kind of like three books in one if that makes sense or three different mysteries in this in one it was definitely cute and I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to this book down in the description box below and I'll also put the link up here on screen if you guys want to check out this book like I said if you're a fan of like Agatha Christie or you're a fan of Sherlock Holmes and you like cozy type of books this might be right up your alley okay let's go ahead and talk about some other books that I read another book that I enjoyed was Inventing Joy by Joe Man Manjano? Mangano? <laughs> Manjano, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She is the inventor of the Miracle Mop and like several other household items. And I was actually gifted this by my parents a couple years ago. I hadn't gotten around to reading it and I just out of the blue decided to pick it up and read it. I will say it was a pretty quick and easy read and it was fairly entertaining. I gave it a three out of five stars. Um, I would say that my only critique of the book is that although she had a lot of like adversity and hardship, it felt like she didn't get into those bits and just kind of went back to like, and then I had this success. And wouldn't it be nice if life was actually like that? So this is definitely like a positive book in the sense of like, it'll all work itself out in the end and you can still have success. I think that's why my parents picked this up for me was because they wanted to, I don't know, my parents have always been big advocates of like, you know, female empowerment. And so this, made sense when I read it. I guess I would recommend it if you're like a business oriented type and you want like a very light read that's very positive and peppy and you can do it kind of thing. 
but yeah i don't really have that much more to say about it because um it was just like a like an autobiography about the successes she's had in business. And One of the other books I read this summer was All Be Gone in the Dark. This is from Michelle McNamara. Ironically, it has a little quote up here from Stephen King, a brilliant genre buster, propulsive, can't stop now reading. Ah, can't stop now reading. That's, <laughs> it took me a second to like process in my head. Um, I found this on, I think I picked this up from Book Outlet and I'm always, I'm a big true crime fan, like I think a lot of us are, and I had heard of Michelle McNamara. She was married to Patton Oswalt before she passed away. She passed away in 2016. And there's also an HBO series based off this, so I thought this would be fun to like read while watching the HBO series. And I gave this a three out of five stars. I might actually rate it a little lower, like a two out of five stars if I were to go back in hindsight. The reason that I didn't care for this is because I went into this with different expectations than I probably should have. When I picked this book up, I thought it was gonna talk about the Golden State Killer and only the Golden State Killer. And basically how these decades old murders had been solved and that the Golden State Killer was found. But it was a lot of um, Michelle McNamara in it and her story and her like involvement with the solving of the case and so was the show. So it's not like they weren't that you know that they didn't say that because it clearly says like one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer. So I probably should have known that she was going to be a lot of this storyline, but I just, like I said, went into this with different expectations. I so the last book that I have a physical copy of that I finished over summertime is Lady Killers. Uh, Deadly Women Throughout History by Tori Telfer. I gave this a four out of five stars and I really enjoyed this. Um, I like how this was broken up because it was every chapter was a different woman through history and like the morbid story around why they were considered like a either serial killer or had multiple victims in their lives. Um, and it's actually interesting because I feel like the author did a really good job of keeping the chapter short and concise but still relaying the interesting information. And I really liked her style of writing because it was actually kind of comedic at times, like a little bit sarcastic. This was just something easy to read that I was like, okay, I'm gonna read like a chapter or two before going to bed. It's not committal, pretty short chapters. And like I said, I was like kind of LOLing as I was reading this because she did a really good job of um, writing this book. I think I also got this from Book Outlet if I remember correctly. So I have another book from her I plan on reading. I. I guess I really like that author so far. Okay, so the next books I either listened to or read on my Kindle. One of the books is, I'll put, put the images on screen here, The Unidentified Mythical Monsters, Alien Encounters, and Our Obsession with the Unexplained by Kali Dickey. I think I actually heard of this book from Caitlin Doty from one of her YouTube videos. And it was interesting, but I felt like it was a little bit of a buzzkill at times. I gave it a three and a half out of five stars because I felt like this guy was almost like a um, skeptic to a fault or like he's really trying to use reasoning and logic to break things down. And sometimes you just want to think like aliens exist or like, you know, mythical beings in the forest because it's just like mythical lore and sometimes fun to think about. And so it was really interesting, but there were some times that I was like, mm, I think, Sometimes there's such a thing as being too logical to a fault where you like keep things within a box. I don't know. I, I think again, I had higher expectations for that. So that this was a book that I would like put down and walk away from and then come back like a week or two later and then pick it up again. Like I wasn't flipping through the pages trying to see what was coming next. Okay, so the next book that I read was Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. I gave this a five out of five stars. This book was so good and not only does the book talk about cults, but it also talks about language and different methodologies used in different group settings. For example, like fitness classes, whether it was SoulCycle or CrossFit, that's the word I was looking for, or like MLMs, like how these different organizations or groups are able to, you know, manipulate people into thinking a certain way or kind of maneuvering themselves into people's lives and kind of making themselves essential. The book also does talk about other cults like Jonestown and Scientology, like what we commonly mainstream think of when we hear the word cult. But I just, 
I, like honestly this was one of those books that I was just looking for something to read it was available on Libby for like a seven day loan I think and I just burned through it very quickly because I found it really interesting it's funny though because I'm looking at the reviews on Goodreads and it seems like it's a very polarizing book so I guess I was on the spectrum of really enjoying it so the last book that I read for the summer I actually listened to and it is what happened to you conversations on trauma resilience and healing by Bruce D Perry and also Oprah's in the book as well and I am in, like I like self-help books and I also like a lot of psychology books and so this was a book that I I think I just probably googled or like this was available again on Libby and so I just um, I'd heard of it and so I decided to listen to it and it was really good I would definitely recommend listening to it over reading it because it ends up sounding like a conversation between Bruce D. Perry and Oprah and I like that through the conversations with Oprah like she kind of clarifies through asking questions if some of the concepts that they're discussing are a little bit more complex which was helpful to me because obviously I don't have a psychology degree and it also made me realize how <laughs> important a childhood is and how fragile like children can be growing up and so I think this is a, like a good book that I will want to read again before I become a mother myself because I think this is a good reminder so this was really good I gave it a five out of five stars I thought it was super helpful and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's dealing with any type of trauma or you know anxiety or depression or just anything in general that you kind of want to learn more about I think it's always helpful to read books like this. All right guys, so those are the books that I read for the summertime. Like I said, I am so excited that we're rolling into fall time because that means I get to, well, I mean, I read like horror and thriller like all year round, but I get to really get into it. I'm currently reading um, Dr. Sleep and also another book that I will probably discuss with you guys at some point or another. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you're curious about Pinion Scorpion and the Barbershop Detectives and picking up copy for yourself, I'll put the link down in the description box below low for you guys to check out and as always I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate comment subscribe share with your friends and family hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys